Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white tokens deck, which is happy playing long grindy games with all of its card advantage. We all know about Caretaker's Talent from Bloomborough, of course, great and drawing extra cards and eventually giving our tokens plus two plus two. But now we also get to play with Enduring Innocence, a 2 1 enchantment creature glimmer with a lifelink, and like the other enduring creatures, it will come back if it gets destroyed in the form of an enchantment instead of as a creature. And then either way, whenever a creature with power two or less enters we get to draw a card and that once each turn so that can be another very powerful card draw engine alongside the caretaker's talent especially against decks that don't have an easy way of exiling our creature so even if it does get destroyed we'll still get it back so now we have eight of these card draw engines and then we just want lots of cheap token makers and lots of instant speed removal that way we can draw cards with all our draw engines to outgrind mid-range and control strategies but we'll also have lots of interaction for the red aggro decks so we've got most of our bases covered so in the token department we've got carrot cake at two mana which makes a rabbit lots of scry can later sacrifice it to gain three make another rabbit and scry again so that can be a way of maybe making a token during the opponent's turn as well so we get to once again draw with a caretaker's talent and innocence which are limited to one card per turn but it also counts the opponent's turn and then we can also make tokens at instant speed with the virtue of loyalty adventure making a 2-2 knight token with vigilance and then the five mana enchantment can be cast at a later point to start pumping up our creatures can be great to go over the top in case we maybe don't have our caretaker's talent to pump up our tokens and then we can also make tokens with Fountain Port, which is the only non-planes in our mana base. This can make fish tokens at the cost of one life, which can then also help us draw with the talent and the innocence. Can also maybe sacrifice tokens that are already in play to draw a card if they're about to get destroyed. And then the reason we have 22 planes is for lay down arms, which can exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes we control, and its controller also gains three life. Now it is a sorcery speed removal spell, which is not always perfect when facing a red aggro with their various pump spells since you want to try and remove their creature in response to all those pump spells getting cast so that's where Elspeth's smite is great dealing three damage to an attacking or blocking creature and exiling it in the process as well and exiling creatures as we all know is very important against this current iteration of red aggro with cards like heartfire hero and cacophony scamp which can authorize deal additional damage on the way out and that's also the reason why i'm playing the full set of not on my watch exiling a target attacking creature so this deck has plenty of instant speed answers to the red aggro deck including a two copies of get lost as well which is a bit more versatile can also answer enchantments like maybe the ley line but can also be very useful in other matchups especially against planeswalkers which our deck can be pretty weak to otherwise and then rounding out the deck we also get to play with split up as a new sweeper destroying either all tapped creatures or all untapped creatures so it's quite versatile can sometimes be a little awkward with the vigilance on the knight tokens from virtue but it does also play well with cards like elspeth's smite since if we're making an unusual attack our opponent might suspect smite and therefore not block our creatures and then now they're tapped and second main we can cast split up destroying all untapped creatures for instance so there's a little bit of synergy there and then a split up also gets the nod over Sunfall in this deck since we don't want to be exiling our own Enduring Innocence. In fact, if we suspect the opponent is running Sunfall, it can sometimes be correct to use Split Up or maybe Get Lost to destroy our own Enduring Innocence so we at least get the enchantment back as opposed to having our creature exiled. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand may be lacking a bit of removal for the aggro decks, but Carrot Cake and Enduring Innocence play well with each other. And then we get to scry into whatever we need. Definitely want to start by playing the planes for laydown arms. Opponent on what looks to be a red-white tokens deck, so this is going to be a very grindy matchup. And one where we prefer Enduring Innocence to get destroyed, so it doesn't get exiled by an opposing Sunfall. Opponent just sky callers. Alright, get in for one. And then now... If our opponent's keeping up a counter spell, if they're more of a control deck instead of a tokens deck, I guess I prefer them countering the innocence over talent, since there's probably more ways to have of exiling the innocence than the enchantment. And yeah, no more lies will counter it. Next turn we can maybe try the talent, or we could sit back and start activating fountain port. Which is also an option. So we'll attack for one.
Yeah, we can just pass a turn. Wait for them to maybe tap out before we cast our enchantment. Demolition fields, too bad, that can destroy a fountain port. Good thing we have a backup. Don't often see demolition field in three color control decks. Usually reserved for two color control decks since it can be a strain on your mana. So if they get a planes, they can still keep up another no more lies to counter the talent. Alright, so now we don't need to worry about it as much. So yeah, I think I'm down to cast it now. And then we can expect a sweeper next turn. But I think I still level up here. Since it pretty much guarantees the card draw. Could have maybe attacked first. And then we can keep Carrot Cake as a way to make a token in the opponent's turn. So we can maybe draw two cards in one turn cycle of the talent. So time for Sunfall. It would keep the opponent tapped out, so we can maybe resolve another card draw engine if we find it. Get Lost could also be a way of destroying our own Enduring Innocence if it's about to get exiled. And now if they pass with mana up, we could just level up the talent. So yeah, opponent forced to wipe the board, it's going to be a Brotherhood's End. So this turn we could both sack Carrot Cake as well as use Fountain Port. So we'll maybe start with a carrot cake. And another get lost doesn't seem super needed, even though it can be an answer to an opposing planeswalker, which we can sometimes struggle to answer. And then another fountain port. So we can draw again. Not in a hurry to get this to level 3. So we've got plenty of answers to creatures. In this matchup, we prefer drawing our card draw engines like Talent and Enduring Innocence. And then more token makers, Virtue of Loyalty would be good too. As we see Jace, yeah, Jace could be kind of a problem if they have four of those. They could easily mill us to death since our deck is somewhat slow to close out the game. We do tend to draw a lot of cards. So yeah, they're just going to mill us for the max amount, 15, still 30 cards left. So if they have two more copies of Jason Hand, we're in trouble. So all we can do is just try and apply pressure as much as possible. And that means probably leveling up the Caretaker's Talent. As we draw another one. So can level up and then still cast it. That's fine. And then if they wipe the board again, we can use Fountain Port to repopulate. So yeah, the lines are pretty important. Chandra's next, that's a good one. Can start by dealing with both creatures. And then the question is whether we get lost to remove it. Or let them untap with it, which could be dangerous. Yeah, we probably need to use get lost. And then... Let's see, I would have six mana left, so I can still use Fountain Port and maybe level up a talent. Yeah, I don't have the mana to cast another one. Well, we did end up finding all four. So, level up. And use Get Lost. So that's our final answer to Planeswalkers, since we bottomed the other copy of Get Lost. So now we need to get there with our creatures. Boone's got the Sunfall, as we suspected. That's fine. We can get back on the board with uh, Talents Activate Fountain Ports. Can do it main phase. And then maybe we'll draw another Token Maker during the opponent's turn. Right, there's our Virtue of Loyalty, so we'll pass. Now, of course, I could avoid drawing too many more cards if we're afraid of another Jace, which is a real concern here. Maybe a reason to main phase the Virtue anyway. Or I can just level up the talents. Yeah, let's do that. 
Make another fish. Now, of course, they could have spot removal for the fish. But they don't. Opponent's gonna transform their token. And what do we get rid of? Probably a knot on my watch. Opponent goes exploring. Finds a lockdown. Good answer to all our tokens, but doesn't answer the talent. But yeah, now Jace is definitely going to be lethal since I don't see us closing out the game before going down to 15 cards. So attack for four, can take it. And lockdown, so the fact that they kept the author lockdown on top makes me pretty suspicious that there is indeed another Jace lurking in their hand. And yeah, there's no real great way to stop it. If I main phase a bunch of tokens, they get swept up. So maybe we just play the innocents and then I can make more tokens in the opponent's turn. So these are all level 2. I suppose we can level this to 3. Or I can go Fountain Ports and use Virtue. Which is maybe better. And then we can level up once we actually attack. So yeah, 20 cards remaining. Can we deal 10 damage before our opponent mills us for 15? Torch the Witness. That's fine. I don't think I want to draw in response. And then, now we can make a knight. And it's actually a good thing that our tokens are too large to draw off during Innocence, so we only draw 3 as opposed to 4. So 16 cards left, which means we're not just dead to Jace if they play it, as long as we avoid drawing here. So I can level up. And then probably level up again, and our opponent explodes. Awesome! So yeah, even if they had a Jace in hand ready to mill us to death, we got there just in time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a Keeper. Good removal for creature decks. Could use an actual token maker to kickstart the Caretaker's talent. But we'll find one eventually. Opponent a red-black, so more of a mid-range deck it seems. Deep Cavern Bat will have a look. Not going to be super effective. I guess the fact that they see Elspeth's Mind lets them play around it. They might just go for the removal spell. Since we can play Caretaker's Talent regardless. And that's what they do. So next turn we can play another one. Keep up Smite. The Bat's not going to be attacking us anytime soon. Unless they play another Bat first. But this turn they have free reign to attack as we're tapped out. Alright, Unstoppable Slasher, especially good to exile with an Elspeth Smite. So, instead of playing the Talent, we'll play the Innocence. So at least we have a blocker in case they have another bat to take the Smite. And then I guess we'll see if the Deep Cavern Bat also gets in there, because then we could maybe exile that instead. Better punch is going to pass, and split up was amazing here. Second attack with Innocence, just to get my two life points, and then split up. I guess never mind, with Archfiends, we would also lose two life. I guess there's still a chance they take it. If they're afraid of Smite, if we drew another copy, for instance. But yeah, opponent's gonna block. So, no harm, no foul. Now the Slasher is eventually going to come back, but not for a while. And then 
don't think I need to level up the talents. So yeah, now we're just waiting for a token maker, and then we're off to the races. Opponent's got another Archfiends, which we can lay down arms. Smite is still a clean solution to the Slasher. So, yeah. Seems like they have a cut down in hand, which can also destroy their own Slasher, so it doesn't get exiled by the Smite. So that's most likely what we're going to set up. Alright, so this is where maybe having a Fountain Port to make a token would be great. But I'm maybe thinking about getting in with the Restless Vents, which we could exile, but I think I'd rather keep Smite for the Slasher. Which could set up a one-hit KO if they also have the Bloodletter, which seems likely in their demon-themed deck. Another Innocence will draw. And then hopefully we'll find that Token Maker. Still nothing. Pass a turn. But now at least we have a backup plan in case they can uh, take away the smite before attacking. That one's actually gonna go for the throats. So if they both have a deep cavern bat and bloodletter, we just die. All right, so they're gonna cut down their own creature here. I guess we'll let the vents trigger resolve in case they want to get rid of cut down. All right, they're just discarding a swamp. So we'll see if they remove their own slasher. Looks like it's cut down it is. Still not going to bother us for two turns. So we have time to finally string together some tokens. Split up the draw. Well, I could get rid of the slasher, but I guess we'll wait. Not that they're going to present another tapped creature here. But maybe an untapped one is going to be scarier. And yep, there's a Bloodletter. So they have the combo. If Slasher hits us with Bloodletter in play, we just die. And now we get to remove two creatures with one split up. And there's Fountain Ports. Alright. So now I'm happy. Can uh, split up first before we make a token. And then I guess we'll just make a token now, even though... I wouldn't be able to make more tokens in their turn. Might just be worth it to level up the talents. Late on arms I could cast right now, but I'll wait. And then now at least we have two fish tokens. So I can maybe level up talent once again. And then the damage is going to pile on pretty quickly if we level them both to level 3. The rest takes late on arms, that's too bad, but... At this point, we're going to see so many cards with double talent and double innocence that it doesn't matter. And the Slasher is going to have a real hard time attacking past all our tokens, so I'm not too worried about the combo either. So maybe start by leveling up here. Maybe getting Talent to level 3 would have played around a cut down as their last card. Since they wouldn't have been able to cut down a 3-3. But yeah, opponents sees what's happening. We're drawing 5 plus cards per turn. Can make it 9 cards per turn if we make a token in their turn as well. So that's just going to be too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a good hand against aggro. Enduring Innocence will need some tokens to go with it, but I'll try it. Let's see what we're up against. Black-white. And a scavenger, so an aura deck. Okay, so having lots of removal is still useful. I'll wait for them to commit an enchantment before I try and remove the scavenger. And a bandit's talent. Alright, that's kind of annoying. I might want to get rid of two lands here. So I can still smite the scavenger if it attacks and cast Enduring Innocence on curve. And then we have Get Lost for future creatures. Carrot Cake's gonna be useful. 
And then if they cannot exile the Enduring Innocence, we're happy. So it looks like they have the uh, Ghostly Armor here. Which will give the Scavenger Ward too. Sheltered by Ghosts. So now we need a land in order to get Lost uh, Scavenger. Split up, I guess, works too. Yeah, Split Up's pretty good against the Aura decks since their protection spells giving Ward or Hexproof don't really interfere with it. And now we just want to start stringing together some of our card draw and just keep hitting our land drops pretty much. Alright, so play Carrot Cake before attacking in case they have their own exile attacking creature effects. Keep Fountain Ports, can be another source of tokens. And then, do I even attack? If our opponent's got an Elspeth Smite, I'm gonna feel pretty silly if I attack here. Even though I could get lost my own creature in response. I think I just pass. Not in a hurry to deal damage. And then I can sack Carrot Cake in their turn to draw again. And that's one great way to beat a discard strategy, is just to draw more cards than they can make you discard. So we're definitely the more controlling deck in this matchup. Opponent levels up the talent all the way, but as long as we can keep our hand full, it doesn't matter. Another split up would be okay. I think I'm just looking for more card draw engines, and yeah, our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. Still missing double white for split up, but should be able to get there with 25 more planes in the deck. So that's about one in two draws. And then we've got talents to maybe copy the knights. But Fountain Port has a backup in case they remove the knight token, so we still have more tokens to draw with. Now let's see what we're up against. Turn one swamp. So for now, still play the planes. And then I don't mind making a knight end of turn. Or we could wait if we suspect removal and play the talent first. Opponent's got the bats. In which case, I don't think I virtue since I may end up using split up just to remove the bats. If they take the talent here, which seems likely. And then the knight's gonna be untapped due to vigilance, so don't want to destroy it. Now I could also wait until I have enough mana to remove the bat and cast the talent in case they've got more bats in hand. Gonna be a Liliana now. Planeswalkers can be tough for us to deal with since we don't apply a ton of pressure to them. For now, not on my watch can go. And then we're gonna go with a pair of token makers as opposed to caretaker's talent, I think. And since they have demolition field, I may want both copies of Fountain Port available. Yeah, normally I would slam down caretaker's talents. But Liliana makes things a little sketchier. Could still try the talent first, but then Liliana's going to be on 5 loyalty before we can try and attack it. So, let's well, Carrot Cake plus Virtue. Get Lost, of course, would be great. Laid on Arms, not as much, since we only have 3 planes at most. And I'm most likely going to discard one. So if our opponent can successfully protect Liliana, we could be in trouble. We see deadly cover-up, so it might be a more controlling deck. Opponent keeps plussing. Gonna try and hang on to the Caretaker's talents. And a Deep Cavern Bat, so that takes the talents. But it's not a great blocker for our tokens at least, so... Enduring Innocence was a good draw, too. And especially against Mono Black, they won't have a way to easily exile it. So if it's destroyed, we'll still have the enchantment left over. You know, Alright, so we're empty-handed. Liliana's not gonna threaten an ultimate anytime soon. And we've got a card draw engine. 
Although our opponent has one as well now, with Gix and the Bat. And a Shieldress Edict takes care of our only non-token creature. And our opponent's gonna cash in Liliana. Alright, so we'll have a Knight left over. Now I could cast a Virtue of Loyalty if I'd like. Or I can maybe sack the Carrot Cake. Draw with Innocence, try and find an answer to Gix or the Bat. Which would be good too. Yeah, I think we start with Carrot Cake. Don't need planes anymore. And draw planes anyway. Alright, so we can at least try and double block Gix. Another Liliana. Now means they can minus, and I don't have a great double block left. Opponent's gonna plus instead. Maybe afraid of another removal spell that can target an attacking creature. So that happens. And then I probably end up sacking the rabbit token to draw, since we need to find some answers. Opponent's gonna alter bait. So yeah, now they would be drawing two extra cards with Gix each turn. Once we answer Gix, we can also attack Liliana, so then we should be fine. Smite could work, and a Knot on my watch. Alright, Knot on my watch, a little bit more awkward in the face of a Liliana. But we'll see if they block. They might jump with a 1-1 one -one bat, but I kind of doubt it when they have a Gix in play. So they might just let this go. And then Liliana, I could see plusing, could see minusing on the knight. Either way, we'll have answers for the bats if Gix doesn't attack. And we could also use Fountain Port to make a token, but only sending in the 1-1 one -one bat that doesn't have anything underneath. Makes sense. So in that case, I guess we smite so I can still use Fountain Port. Even though Smite is better if we're trying to attack past Gix. So this way they don't get to draw. They still haven't activated Liliana, so we don't know if we're gonna have to discard. But yeah, Fountain Port, make a token draw card, seems like the play. So they're looking at Demolition Fields. Can just float mana here and postpone my decision. Hopefully they don't have a second Demolition Field. They will make us discard. And not on my watch can go keep the carrot cake to draw more cards. And a caretaker's talent, perfect. So now I'm not too worried about Liliana ultimating. Our opponent gets a chance to connect with a bat, but that should be fine. We just go talent, carrot cake, and then we should be super far ahead on cards. Land is good, just want to hit my land drop. Ideally find a one mana removal spell alongside it, but now we get to level up the talents. Make an extra knight. And Virtue of Loyalty is now looking pretty dangerous. Discard my last card to the Investigator. Opponent draws. And then at the very least we can use Carrot Cake to draw two. And now Get Lost also a very nice answer. Could level up Talent to level three. Creatures get plus two plus two, just attack Liliana. And then I still have a few options. Something along these lines, can maybe keep an extra creature back to block. But yeah, I doubt they're gonna protect Liliana. 
And then now if we remove the bat, they don't have any great attacks left. So I'll just pass. Shieldred can punish the card draw. Still have plenty of answers to it. Blast Zone doesn't get to destroy my token since it starts with one counter, but could eventually get to three counters, I suppose. So yeah, now the question is, are we more afraid of Shieldred or the Cavern Bat? If I remove the Bat and get back Talents, it doesn't really make the Shieldred situation any better. So maybe for now it is safer to remove Shieldred and then... Sure, they get to draw a card here, but it's not the end of the world. And then my creatures can also keep attacking, since there's no 4-5 death touch on defense. Still want to remove Shieldred before they hit me, so they don't gain as much life. And then we still have this Virtue of Loyalty ready to go. And Liliana on top, they're gonna keep. I guess it does pair well with the Investigator, and if we're gonna draw a bunch of cards each turn, they can keep enabling it. Alright, so this turn we can keep attacking, use Smites if they block with Gix, and then cast a Virtue of Loyalty. That's kind of the baseline play. Or we can sack Carrot Cake and start drawing a bit more. But being empty-handed is not necessarily a bad thing here. So now I do want to go full control in case our opponent's last card is some spot removal. Let damage happen. And then in the end of combat step we can still cast Smite since Gix is still technically a blocking creature. But now they can't remove my 3-3 in response to save Gix. So that's an important trick that you need to learn when playing with Smite. Alright, and then now tap out for Virtue. I'm empty-handed, so Investigator doesn't get to do much. And can sack a rabbit to Liliana. And still threaten a lot of damage. Opponent takes a blast zone. Plays Liliana. Rabbit down. So opponent's going to be at 11. And then now we can sack the carrot cake. And draw Mother Innocence. If I play this, it will still come back in the form of an enchantment. And it will also draw off the innocence that's already in play. Since the token was too big for the Innocence to draw. But this will just be a 2-1. And then split up is not a bad leftover. Okay, maybe... Attack first. Finish off Liliana. And with Liliana gone I feel better about playing out a lands. All our creatures are huge. Blast zone to kind of wipe the board. And I go for the throats. Alright, they did actually end up clearing most of our creatures. Split up can now destroy tapped creatures, get our talent back, and we can start leveling that up. Last zone levels up. So Talents activates. And now we get to draw two cards since our tokens are small again. Late on Arms can exile the Investigator, hit you for six, and then next turn we should have it. Go for the throat 
is not quite going to be good enough. And there we go. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand. Good mix of tokens, card draw and removal. And we're up against a red aggro. All right, we've got a decent opening hand here with smite and not on my watch. Just need to keep hitting our land drops and hope our opponent goes all in on this hardfire hero. They are playing green as well, it seems, so they might have some protection spells, which might make things more awkward. And then do I smite right now? I can get myself into trouble by waiting too much, but I think I still let damage happen for now. We also have split up as a board wipe, so we can potentially be more patient, but definitely cannot afford to tap out for a carrot cake. So again, just take two if they're okay with that. Now I do still have to watch out for a hasty creature with felonious rage killing me out of nowhere, but I think it's still worth it to split up here, or I can wait one more turn, and then next turn I can split up and have smite as backup. That would be the absolute safest play. Sure. Our opponent seems to be respecting the interaction so far, although now they might also have access to green mana for protection. So things can get a little dicey. Picnic Ruiner are gonna tap out for the adventure. That's a lot of counters. So now Smite doesn't look quite as good anymore. And now the problem too is if I split up, I still take five damage from the hero. This saves me 10 damage, basically. Another not on my watch. Does that change my play? I think I still like the split up play here. Alright, so just playing it extra safe. Might have worked out better had we just cast split up on three. opponent has got two cards left. Challenger is one of them. No blocks, and then could just take two, could try and smite. This does have prowess, so Monstrous Rage could punish me. Opponent's going to be playing Runer second main. Yeah, I think I do still try and smite here. That worked. So one card left, and it doesn't appear to be a pump spell. Alright, so now I can play the Carrot Cake, keep up not on my watch, and look for maybe an extra land. And then we can finally get the Talons going. Laid on Arms has to be good enough as well. So Picnic Ruiner attacks. Can just take it for now. Happy taking two. Since again, the green mana is making me a little bit worried about potential interaction. And then I think I'm fine sacking the carrot cake just to make an extra blocker. Still keep laid on arms. And then we've got a few options. Safest line is probably just laid on arms the picnic ruiner. And then I can probably afford to tap out for an enduring innocence as well. That works. And then next turn I can go Talent level up. But now we can also start gaining a life back. Not in a hurry to start attacking in case there's a haste creature. Now if they save the slick shots with some pump spells I could still die. Scamp is also scary if they could give it haste. But now we should be fine. So I can play Talent. But then it's a little risky to level up. Or I can pass and then plan to activate Fountain Port to make a token and draw with the Innocence. I think we go with Talent and then just keep up not on my watch. Could be fine to attack with Innocence. Bone's probably going to take it. That way we gain two. I'm right, pretty happy if they trade. One fewer creature that could threaten to combo kill us. And then still gonna play it extra safe, keep up not on my watch. 
we're happy playing a long game. So I'm just gonna give myself the best chance to not get comboed. And yeah, her opponent's gonna scoop it up, just too much interaction coming their way. Awesome. Alright, so glad we got to showcase the mono red matchup as well, which is why I have made some of the card choices like Elspeth Smite and Not On My Watch. That's where it truly shines. So yeah, the red deck doesn't seem quite as popular as it was a week or two ago, but it's still definitely one of the most popular decks in the best of one ladder, so this seems like a decent strategy to beat it, but we're also well equipped to deal with some of the grindier mid-range decks, especially mono black seems like a winnable matchup as well, since we've got so much card draw and token makers that they can't really keep up with all their spot removal and discard spells, but there will be matchups like maybe blue-eyed control, if the opponent mills us out with Jace, there's not a whole lot we can do about it, and then there's other decks with the various overlords or maybe five color domain which can also potentially go over the top of what we're doing so it's not by any means a perfect strategy but for right now in the best of one ladder i've been having a good time with it so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day